So, so as promised, I did not upload the second part of my SwitchPod review before the new year. So you see, the lower your expectation, the less disappointment you get. So anyways, so for the second day of our foodie adventure, I decided to bring this baby out just to sort of like re visit my experience with this and kind of get a fresh event, uh, fresh perspective on this one more time so that I can have a fair and balanced review comparison of the two. Um, so yeah, for day two, we hit up slightly different places, but I, we kind of did pretty much the same things. So uh, it should be still a rather accurate comparison and usage scenario as a vlogger slash food shooting person, I guess. So yeah, let's go. So fat. I like this sasa more. Ah, and the skin is like glass like right? yeah. The previous one, the skin is slightly tougher. Yeah, the previous one more like American barbecue but got got bark one. It's nice. Um, I kind of prefer yesterday's one. It's normal, tender and fatty. Fatty. Mm. Too nice. Fat. Fat. Yeah. Fat. Yeah. Fat. Fat. Yeah. Fat. Fat. Just something about eating fat. Ching Nang Wo. She has sold the meat in its originality. <laughs> now, this is the, like, the original style where you put duck for it. So, you prefer this one? I think I like the meat in this style. I think I like both in its own way. This one has more fat, so it's nice and chewy. And yet, it's not too hot. You mean this one? Two fifty. Oh, eight dollars. Five dollars. Close. Wow, six up. Yeah. Wow. Why? Is it upsize or what? Is this my shit? I think six dollars for this. I would pay for it. Wow. Standard size is actually dollar. Oh. Yeah, but, but, but cheaper ones. Right, cheaper ones. Like the lor mee can be cheap, it's just $3. It's quite a big bowl. Yeah, lor. Yeah, it's quite a big bowl. Yeah, lor. 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 I really one by one. I really did it all in one. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Up to the standard. It may be bigger in size, but then small. I'll tell you about this. It's nice, it's nice. Okay. And it's also not too like, oily. Or... The colors are very nice for this one. That's your favorite here. Yeah. On honey. We got our dog. You? Me? Okay. At the moment, it's this one. Yeah. I think you're surprised for me, it was the character. Yeah. Like, I yeah. More, more food. Yeah. First stop, Yong Baru. 
Second stop, Chinatown. I'm already very full. <laughs> Can do it. Short break, we're having kopi with butter and kaya toast. Tonga. Uh, different, eh no, same. Got same combo A, A, B, even got combo D la. So this is egg tart and this is coconut egg tart. So that concludes our two-day foodie adventure with Shireen, Maureen and William. And that is day one with the Switch Pod if you haven't seen it, there's a card for it. And day two with the Siri to have a comparison. So what do I think? Uh, let's go bit by bit. Uh, the first usage scenario would be the handheld mode, which is the part whereby we're walking around and, and shooting ourselves with the camera. So with the switch port, it's definitely easier. As I mentioned, there, was, there are these uh, grooves that allow you to hold it. And while holding it, it actually becomes rather comfortable. I don't necessarily have to extend my arm all the way out and then uh, fatigue myself that quickly. And if you hold it this way with the ball head, it actually is a rather comfortable height to be shooting from. Not under the eye level, not under the chin. You don't risk double chin syndrome. On the other hand, with the Siri, you have a much longer base if you compare the two together. And this allows you to shoot at a much higher height. Not, not necessarily longer because uh, if you extend it all the way out, it starts to get very shaky and it's very uncomfortable to shoot with. I don't recommend that. Uh, but then it defeats itself in the sense that the grip when you hold it with the super extended mode is super uncomfortable, it cuts into your, into your flesh not necessarily the most comfortable to be using so you probably have to flip it back up and then hold it with it rounded and then when you do so it becomes, signific it becomes significantly shorter and not so long, not so wide so in this aspect, I would say the Switch Pod definitely has an advantage in that area. And then now we go to the next case scenario, which is the tabletop shooting mode. So as you can see, setting up the tabletop mode on the Siri takes an additional 5-6 seconds. Doesn't really bother me that much because I don't really need to like quickly set up the tabletop shot anyways. So if you compare the base, right, they are both about the same, but because the way that this spreads out from the middle, when you put it on the tabletop, you cannot put anything else around that area, it's just going to knock things over. On the other hand, with switch pot, because it is spread out from here, it doesn't hinder my dining experience that much. 
both of them are rather stable. I don't really worry about like flexing or, or shakiness when I put it on the table. One of the key difference I would say would be the fact that the Siri actually has a bit of a height advantage over the switch port. And this is in a sense quite vital to me if you ask me because sometimes you'll be shooting rather tall objects, maybe a ramen bowl or something and uh, the switch port just doesn't cut it in terms of getting that nice shot into the bowl. On the other hand, the Siri is tall enough, it stretches quite high and I can comfortably shoot the contents of the bowl itself. So definitely points to the Siri over there. One last additional point to note would be that for the switch port, you actually have like these little grooves, screw hole grooves on both legs of this. This one doesn't have it. And this allows me to sort of put the camera anywhere I want and then attach maybe a microphone or an additional light or something via the screws and then allow me to put it on the table, use it as sort of like a mobile, I wouldn't say mobile, but like a fixed uh, vlogging piece to cam setup rig. And uh, it's very useful because not all your accessories will come with a Koshu mount or accessory. That's it. With a setup like that, I don't think I want to be holding it out because it's definitely going to get super heavy and I'm just gonna, not going to be able to get good footages anyways. Ultimately, in conclusion, do I recommend one of each? To me, it's kind of like comparing apples to oranges. I don't really have a definitive answer. Um, one is better for walking and shooting, the other is better for stationary shots. To be very very frank, I would say maybe I would bring the switch port more often and I'll tell you why. So the ability to hold it for much longer with less fatigue when you're walking and shooting is a major plus point. And when it comes to like tabletop shots, to be frank, aside from again shooting myself, I probably won't consider holding on to this anyways. I will consider taking it off the switch port and doing handheld shots of the foot. I can work around that quite easily. So yeah, definitely go for this. Again, the referral link is at the bottom. It doesn't add any additional cost to me. It just gives me a little hey hey from the guys at SwitchPod itself. So if you like more comparisons or random nonsense product reviews, check out the channel, subscribe or like or whatever you want to ask. Just put it in the comment. I'll try to answer as much as possible. Bye guys.